The Volkswagen ID Buzz trendily redefines what a large family MPV can be for the new EV era. Practicality is sacrificed on the altar of fashion, but hey, this EV's fun but sensible, Envira conscious but desirable, which makes it very unusual indeed. With this car, the ID Buzz, one of motoring's most iconic models, the Volkswagen Bus, has finally been reinvented. What do you think? The old Type 2 model it references, in production for a quarter of a century between 1950 and 1975, is still, after the Beetle, Volkswagen's second most recognisable vehicle, variously known as the Camper, the Bully and the Hippie Van, but most commonly called the Microbus, or more usually just the Bus. Promises from Wolfsburg to recreate it started right back at the turn of the century, first with the Microbus concept of 2001, then with the Bully concept of 2011, followed by the Bud E of 2015, and most recently, the ID Buzz cargo concept in 2018. That's quite a gestation period, but Volkswagen was waiting for the technology to properly reinvent this vehicle for a new electrified era and needed to introduce its ID series of full electric hatch models first. This ID Buzz became the fourth of them at its launch here in 2022, a trend-setting people carrier that quickly became the internet's favourite MPV. An astonishing surge of popularity for what had until then been a dying market genre, sold both in this passenger carrying MPV form and in an alternative commercial ID Buzz cargo van, guys. It's built in Hanover alongside the brand's more conventional multivan MPV. And you probably won't need us to tell you that it's like no other model of its kind. Highly fashion conscious, this car follows in the footsteps of trendsetters like modern versions of the Land Rover Defender and the Fiat 500 in looking to reinvent a famous shape for the current age. But you've got to really want one. Premium style pricing pitching this all electric family Volkswagen somewhere between on one side EV versions of conventional large MPVs from Peugeot, Citroën and Vauxhall and on the other, premium badged mid-sized EV crossovers like the Jaguar I-Pace and the Audi Q8 e-tron. Lengthy waiting lists suggest that hasn't put people off. But can the ID Buzz really justify the hype? Well, to find out, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test. Climb into the high seating position and you're greeted with a small graphic of your car on the little instrument screen. You don't need to push the silver steering column mounted start button to fire things up. A press of the brake pedal does that. Switching the instrument panel to a split screen, prioritising a digital speedometer and battery readouts. Click the bottom part of the back of the gear selector stalk on the right hand side behind the steering wheel to pick D or twice for B and you're all set. But for what? The ID Buzz may not be particularly quick, but it still has that rapid electric vehicle feel, particularly from low speeds. The 204 PS electric motor is mounted at the rear, which is a nice nod to the original bus models with their characteristic, though very underpowered, air-cooled engines at the back. You're unlikely to sense any real lack of power with this buzz. It's as fast as a modern family MPV needs to be. Ignore the dry stats, 0 to 62 miles an hour in 10.2 seconds on the way to a top speed limited to 90 miles an hour so as to keep a lid on the driving range. The meaningful figure is the 310 newton meter torque reading, which means instant pickup from the e motor and acceleration that never feels slow, so easy, short, sharp overtakes are dispatched comfortably. For those, you'll ideally need the most urgent of the three primary drive modes, Sport, the others predictably being Eco and Comfort. 
There's also the usual extra individual option, allowing you to set your own parameters for driving dynamics, steering, drive response, ACC cruise control, the lights and the air conditioning. The rear driven powertrain we're trying here, which is mated to the Volkswagen Group's usual 77 kilowatt hour battery, will be the primary one for buzz folk. But a larger battery choice will follow to deal with the extra weight of the alternative long wheelbase body style and the expected dual motor four motion all wheel drive option, the latter likely to spawn a future GTX high performance version. You don't really need more weight or power here though because that'll inevitably hinder the all important EV driving range potential quoted at a reasonably creditable figure of up to 258 miles. And we can't really imagine why you'd want a version of this car that handled any more dynamically than the ID Buzz already does. It's cornering aided by the usual favorably low center of gravity created by careful mid-chassis battery placement. It actually doesn't drive like a tall MPV in any way, certainly not one nearly two meters high. In fact, the standard of ride quality and body control is truly impressive. And for anyone coming to a buzz from something like a Caravelle or even the brand's current multivan, it'll all be quite a revelation. You might expect a big people carrier with huge wheels to cope with potholes and tarmac tears like a tobogganing tin tray, but this one actually manages to ride better than most of the smaller, more conventional, mid to large sized EVs we've recently driven, most of them crossovers. And it doesn't really need the adaptive damping option that Volkswagen's chosen not to offer. You might expect that supple suspension to deliver a wallowy feeling through the corners, but instead body roll is remarkably well controlled, though the tall stance has to tell at some point, and when you reach that, any rear seated passengers are likely to admonish you in no uncertain terms. The buzz also feels agile in town, where you're aided, thanks to the rear-driven drive layout, by an 11-metre turning circle that's impressively tight for a 4.7-metre-long MPV of this size. And of course, that high-set seating position and vast front three-quarter vision helps enormously through city streets. We're less impressed by Volkswagen's continuing reluctance with its EVs to give the driver much control over brake regenerative energy harvesting. There are no steering wheel paddles to increase or decrease this and no center screen options to do so either. All you can do in this regard is to click the drive selector from D to B, which Volkswagen says allows the car to regain up to 100 kilowatts of energy, though you wouldn't know that from the relatively mild level of speed retardation you experience in B off throttle. One pedal driving is not a discipline ID Buzzfolk will ever have to learn. The brakes themselves are reassuring, despite the presence of old fashioned drums at the rear, and the blend between friction braking and e-motor braking is expertly judged. As is refinement, you expect a big MPV to be troubled by wind roar, but this one has a slippery drag coefficient of just 0.28 CD, and the result is a very premium level of sound insulation indeed, emphasized of course by the relative silence of the electric motor. And in this case, by the way, that Volkswagen has minimized journeying disturbances from tire din, interior rattles, and suspension creaks. If you can afford more, there are some clever drive assist touches to add, like the brand's travel assist traffic jam cruise control, which virtually takes over driving for you in queues or at highway speeds. And the park assist plus system we've been trying here that can memorize the last 50 meters you've covered at low speed, including any changes of direction, automatically allowing the car at a push of a button to retrace its steps in confined spaces, steering, accelerating and braking itself. It's all the kind of thing you'd expect from an MPV that looks as futuristic as this one.
How has Volkswagen managed to make an MPV this appealing? Whichever way you look at it, this is a remarkable piece of design. Faithful to the original ID Buzz concept car that debuted at the Detroit Motor Show in 2017 and originally evolved from the microbus concept shown at the Geneva Motor Show back in 2001, it combines an instantly recognisable profile with Volkswagen's now familiar ID, all electric design language. The result is anything but dull to look at, somehow retro, without looking it. It's as much the proportions as the overall style that reflect the classic VW bus look. At 4.7 metres long in this short wheelbase form, the Buzz is over half a metre longer than the old Type 2, but there are neat little design touches that help along the way with the retro vibe. A blacked out glass house that creates a floating style roof, huge aerodynamic flat face 19 inch or as in this case 21 inch wheels, super short overhangs and three gloss black D-pillar streaks, a nod to the rear air vents found on those old classic bus models. Plus, for a large MPV, there's an outstandingly sleek drag coefficient of just 0.29 CD. And most models will be ordered with a multivan style two tone paint finish like the one we have here. It's all distinctly unvan like, though, if you do actually want a van, there's always the ID Buzz cargo version. That won't be offered with the longer wheelbase you can ask your dealer about with this MPV model. The front incorporates the iconic V shaped bonnet that pays homage to the classic T1 bus, as does the huge VW badge in the center of the nose, the largest such emblem fitted to any Volkswagen model. This central light bar differentiates this test car's plusher trim level, as does the IQ light tech in the LED headlights that flank it, which, like the windscreen and huge front quarter light windows, stretch round almost halfway to the front doors. This deep chin gives the buzz a more aggressive look, this lower panel broken up with hexagon latticing across the bottom. Volkswagen's added another large logo to the tailgate, which has horizontal LED tail lights, which with this plusher trim level also get the IQ light tech. On all variants, the rear lamps are connected by an end-to-end -end light strip fitted for the first time on a Volkswagen commercial vehicles model. There are lower corner reflectors at each end of the bumper and a black rooftop shark fin style aerial adds a finishing touch. More importantly, under all of this, sits the car's sophisticated MEB platform that this car shares with its more conventional ID stablemates, development of which has taken the lion's share of the £54 billion the Volkswagen Group has spent in developing its new era EV technology. So, achingly trendy on the outside, will it be equally avant-garde on the inside? Let's take a look. We think you'll like what you'll find here. You sit much higher than you would in a comparably priced mid-sized SUV above all those batteries. And a large, almost upright windscreen allows for lots of light, as does the enormous expanse of glass down each side. Slim A-pillars and huge front quarter lights all contribute too, making it seem very Renault Espace-like, if you remember one of those, and meaning the cabin feels light and airy. It feels very different to Volkswagen's comparably sized multivan or the brand's old Caravelle or Transporter MPV models, not only because you don't sit over the front axle, but also because there's a completely open lower floor, so you could walk across and get out of the passenger side, should you feel so inclined. You can walk back between the front seats too, or at least you could if you remove this central so-called buzz box, which easily detaches from its floor clips when you don't need it. The bright, friendly decor helps with the general feeling of spaciousness with a silver-framed centre fascia panel. It gets smart silver birch finishing with this plusher model. And across the range, there are plenty of impractically cream-coloured plastics and fabrics, which are wisely more darkly shaded in the cargo van version. You don't immediately notice the slim illuminating ID light panel at the base of the windscreen, but it'll be a talking point at night, particularly when highlighting certain functions, lighting up red, for instance, when the front camera system thinks you ought to hit the brake. 
With this plusher trim level, there are also the play and pause symboled floor pedals we've seen in other ID models. No doubt the Germans' sense of humour. As with those EVs, the digital cockpit instrument screen bucks current trends by being just 5.3 inches in size. The main part of the display you'll need has a digital speedo with a speed limit readout above, gear selection below and battery range info below that. This centre part usually displays in three split screen form with driver assistance info to the left and navigational trip data to the right. You can swipe this view button on the right hand steering wheel spoke to the left to make the navigation and trip data part of the screen bigger. Or if you swipe the view button right, you can make the driver assistance part of the screen larger. It all works quite well, but obviously unlike with the much larger instrument screens on rivals, you can't have full GPS mapping brought directly into your line of sight. And there's no option for a head up display either. Most of the reviews you'll read on this car deride its 10-inch Discover Pro central infotainment monitor. We've actually got this slightly larger 12-inch infotainment package plus version here. And actually, we don't have any particular problem with either setup. There are two main types of home screens selected by touching this button on the right of the screen. One provides the usual icons, including navigation, radio, media, phone, vehicle charging and sound. The other splits the home screen into large, easily viewed widgets and the driver can choose which ones they want to see. Here we have a nav map, audio settings, battery charge and phone status. Swiping left brings up trip data and music settings. When you go into any of these sections, a shortcut menu appears on the left hand side of the screen to easily switch between functions. Everything you really need is integrated into this centre screen into which an online connectivity unit is integrated, incorporating a fixed eSIM card, which connects you through to the various remote interactivity functions of the car's provided WeConnect app. There's a decent nine-speaker DAB audio system, and via Volkswagen's usual App Connect setup, you get the usual wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Plus, over-the-air updates and an in-car shop, via which further applications can be purchased. These including a Spotify app that can be used even without a smartphone. There's a decent voice control system and this infotainment package plus setup gives you streaming and internet services too. It's all a long way from the hippie bus. Unfortunately, not everything about the front of cabin experience is great. It couldn't be because a number of elements of floor design have been carried over from other smaller ID models. In our experience, everyone apart from Volkswagen hates these slider controls below the centre screen for volume and temperature, designed before the days when we all started slathering our hands with sanitizer and unfathomably unlit at night. So after dark, you have to stab at them and guess at the likely end result, which is pretty much also the situation with this squarical bank of touch-sensitive switches by your right knee for lights and demist options. There's no proper haptic feedback from these switches, so after a prod, you usually don't know whether you've activated them or not, and generally have to look away from the road to find out. Equally annoying are the touch-sensitive buttons on the steering wheel spokes. The left-hand side one is badged mode, which makes you think it's for the drive modes, but initial stabbing reveals that instead it controls the speed limiter. Drive modes are actually taken care of by a button under the central screen. Annoyingly, Volkswagen still hasn't worked out a way of activating them by voice control. None of these things, though, will take a massive amount of adjustment, and you might as well take the view, as we do, that they're easily balanced out by other thoughtful design touches you'll find around this cabin. We particularly like the removable buzz box between the seats we mentioned earlier, though it would be even better if it could be slid back and forth, like the one in the multivan. A pull-out 1.4-litre cubby angles away from the front of it. From the back, you pull out a deep slide-out 5-litre drawer. And the top has an open compartment with two repositionable partition clips, which also function as ice scrapers and bottle openers. The seats are good too, supportive, heated and fitted out with armrests, though it's a pity they can't be swivelled round to face those in the rear. 
All models get a multicolour ambient lighting system, the one with this plusher trim bathing the interior in your choice of 30 soothing shades after dark. Providing you don't mind the easily grubbed up light shades used in here, you'll like pretty much everything else about the cabin finishing. There are some hard wearing plastics, but these are kept low down and generally out of sight. Otherwise, the quality broadly matches the premium pricing with smart surfacing and stitched leather alternative materials in the upholstery and around the steering wheel. That's unlike some of the soft vegan fittings in many other EVs, really do feel nice to the touch. And we clicked with the climate system too, even though it's built into the centre screen. You activate your ventilation options by pushing this climber button under that main monitor, which connects you through to a climate home screen with what it calls classic climate functions, the usual demisting and so on. Plus there's an air care section for purifying the cabin environment. And there's also a helpful smart climate section with easy shortcut options for things like warm my feet, cool my feet and warm hands. It all works very well. We've already touched on some of the elements of storage provision, but there's much more to tell you about. The open centre part of the floor we mentioned earlier is only open provided you haven't pulled out this twin cup holder compartment from the lower part of the fascia, just below this blacked out brand badge. As in a van, you get upper and lower door bins, the lower ones notably deep. And there's a huge glove box with coin holders and a big open storage area in the middle of the fascia just above. A cubby by your left knee is small but very deep and two of the five provided front of cabin USB-C ports reside next to it. Another USB-C port is in the rear view mirror, which like all the others, thanks to the use of the latest USB power delivery system, can deliver up to 45 watts, three times as much as you get from a conventional USB-C port. So you'll be able to much more quickly charge things like laptops and power tools. An overhead sunglasses compartment has been omitted, but there's another small cubby by your right knee and a ticket clip in the driver's sun visor. There are areas for underseat storage beneath both front chairs too, but no tray in either, so items stored would potentially slide forward into the footwells. Better to use the space underneath the front passenger seat for the optional 230 volt socket, which can power electrical appliances from the vehicle's 12 volt battery. Unlike vehicles with internal combustion engines, the 230 volt connection in this EV can also be used with the motor off. Okay, let's take a look in the rear. Access, as you'd expect in an MPV, by sliding side doors, which as an option can be electrically powered. You might want that option because they take quite a slam to manually shut and you don't want to have to keep worrying whether the kids have done it properly. Once you're comfortable inside, you wouldn't think this car was based on the same MEB platform as Volkswagen's relatively compact ID4. As you can see, there's no lack of occupant space back here, as you'd hope given the lengthy 2,989mm wheelbase length. What's a little more disappointing is the use of a conventional bench here rather than the three individual seats you'd normally get in a purpose-designed MPV. Still, at least unlike in most fully electric crossover models, this bench slides by up to 150 millimetres, plus the backrest also reclines by quite a long way. Because of the flat floor, there's room for a middle seated adult here, though the uncomfortable seat sculpting in the centre discourages that. Flimsy feeling plastic tables incorporating a cup holder pull out from the front seat backs. And there's direct access to that buzz box pull out drawer we mentioned earlier. As well as lower seat back pockets, there are small ones as well. Unfortunately, the side windows don't open and can't be fitted with blinds. But as in the front, there are two tiers of door bin with a USB-C port in the upper part though that latter feature will cause problems for passengers if they've devices plugged into it when the door slides open. There are no centre vents, but you get overhead reading lights and grab pulls on each B-pillar with a built-in coat hook. Right. 
At this point, if we were testing the long wheelbase version of this model, we'd be showing you access to the third seating row. But for our market, the short wheelbase body shape doesn't offer that option, which given the 4,712 millimeter body length ought to mean a pretty huge boot. Is that what you get? Well, let's take a look. You'll need plenty of rearward space to operate the vast tailgate tight spaces in multi-storey car parks will be an issue. And with the base variant, you have to pay extra to get it power operated, which is virtually essential as it's quite heavy. It rises to reveal a low loading sill and a potentially enormous 1,121 litre space, more than twice what you get in a comparably priced electric SUV. On this plusher style spec model, much of the lower part of that space is taken up with this multi-flex board, but you can remove that if you wish and have somewhere to store it. Most of the time, of course, you'll leave it in place, which would be convenient because with this suspended floor fitted, the nearer part could be angled up so you can slide these canvas storage trays in and out. One for the safety kit and luggage nets, the other for the charging leads. It's difficult to understand from back here why the UK importers aren't offering the option of a third seating row with this short wheelbase body style. There's clear evidence of provision for it with trays, a cup holder, a speaker and reading lights on both sides. Unfortunately, the rear bench doesn't tumble forward, nor can it be removed in the way that's possible with Volkswagen's multivan. Practical boot features include a 12 volt socket and a pull out bag hook on the right and a bright light and a switch for the optional retractable tow bar on the left. A warning triangle is built into the inner part of the tailgate. Should you want to use your ID Buzz like a removal van, the rear bench backrest can be, of course, folded forward, though the 60-40 split isn't as convenient as the 40-20-40 split that you get on, say, a comparable BMW iX3 that would allow long items like skis to be slid forward between a couple of rear seated folk. It's unlikely, though, that you'll need to start folding the rear seat because up to 16 carry-on cases will fit back here without doing so. Twice as many as you'd get in, say, that iX3 or another similar EV crossover like Jaguar's I-Pace. That's due not only to the tall ceiling, but also to 1,300 millimetres of load area length. If you do fold the rear bench flat and remove the multi-flex board, then up to 2,205 litres of space would be available. This is theoretically one of Volkswagen's commercial vehicles, which means that all the brand's van dealers will stock it, but not all of the company's car dealerships will. If you want to try an ID Buzz, it's best to go to the Volkswagen website, find this model, click on the test drive option, then enter your postcode, at which point the page should give you the Volkswagen van or car dealer with Buzz availability nearest to you. From launch, there was an enormous 18 month wait for this model from point of order. But by the time of our test in spring 2023, that period had shrunk to around nine months. Forget any thoughts you might have had about this being a van for the people, as its old Type 2 60s predecessor was. The people being targeted here are very much of the sort wanting a bus for Belgravia rather than the Bronx, which was why from launch and at the time of filming, ID Buzz pricing started from nearly £60,000 for the base life trim level that few folk want with a premium of nearly £5,000 for the plusher style version we're trying here. As we compiled this review, both could only be had with a 204 PS rear mounted electric motor powered by a 77 kilowatt hour battery. A familiar Volkswagen Group EV formula, but in this case an extremely expensive one. Add a few important extras to this style variant and you could easily be looking for the kind of £70,000 spend necessary to acquire this particular test car. And that's for this short wheelbase, five seat body style. Think in terms of a spend in the upper £60,000 bracket for the seven seat long wheelbase version of this MPV model that hasn't been launched at the time of our test, potentially with a larger battery option. 
nor had we seen the dual motor GTX all-wheel drive version offered with an extra motor on the front axle to create a higher 299 PS total output. You'll certainly need a £70,000 plus spend for one of those. What you could have at the time of filming was the commercial vehicle version of this model, the ID Buzz Cargo, which was launched at XVAT pricing from around £43,500 for the base Commerce version, with the better equipped Commerce Plus model, excluding VAT, priced from around £48,500. Both prices calculated after reduction of the government's £5,000 plug-in van grant. That LCV isn't our focus here, covered instead in a separate film. Nor is the camper version, which was being readied for launch as we completed this review, available with an optional through-floor mattress and what Volkswagen calls a cuckoo box, which is apparently a sort of camp kitchen. With that version, which will mark the debut of the ID Buzz in America, you really would start to feel you were in some sort of successor to the hippie van of the 60s. But that's not the reality of the proposition here. If it was, you could talk of obvious rivals to this model being the three electric van-based big MPVs from the Stellantis Group, Peugeot's e-Traveller, Citroen Z Space Tourer and the Vauxhall Vivaro Life Electric, which are priced from around £37,000, nearly half the cost of this short wheelbase ID Buzz and offering up to four more passenger seats into the bargain. But... Boring looks and a pathetic driving range, no more than around 136 miles between charges, will count those options out for almost all potential buzz folk. People who, if they actually needed a family MPV, would really be better off looking at the plug-in hybrid version of the model that rolls down the same Hanover production line as this buzz, the Volkswagen Multivan. But that e-hybrid variant only goes 31 miles between charges. If you really did want a multi-seater, large, fully electric MPV to rival the long wheelbase version of this Buzz, a Mercedes EQV would be a much closer match. But that model's still well down on style and driving range at 213 miles and is expensive. Think 85 to 90,000 pounds. All of this means a reality that would have been quite inconceivable before this Volkswagen's launch, that of a practical, family-orientated MPV that primarily competes for the attention of people who'd normally choose trendy SUV crossovers, in this case, EV versions of them anyway. But what kind? Something like a Mercedes EQB from around £55,000 is a price category below the ID Buzz and a bit small. Something larger, like an Audi Q8 e-tron, a Jaguar I-Pace or a Mercedes EQC would be closer, but rather too expensive in the 70 to £75,000 bracket. If you want a mid-to-large EV crossover of that kind as an alternative to this buzz, we'd instead point you to a BMW iX3 or, more preferably, to the appealing Genesis GV70 electrified. Both, at the time of this test, cost around £65,000, about the same as the plusher version of this short wheelbase model. But an electrified SUV of any sort would really be a different type of proposition entirely. So, we've arrived at the conclusion you'd probably held to start with, namely that there's nothing quite like this ID Buzz. And if you're of that mind, then you'll be wanting to know just how generous Volkswagen's been with standard equipment for the plump asking prices being demanded here. So, let's take a look at that now. All models come with LED headlights, rear LED tail lamps, automatic wipers, rear privacy glass, all-round parking sensors, a rear camera, an alarm and keyless entry and start, plus sliding doors on both sides for access to the rear. There's also a heated windscreen and heated washer nozzles along with adaptive cruise control, incorporating a speed limiter. And as you'd expect, you get a Mode 3 Type 2 charging cable. This one, six metres long. Appallingly, as so often with EVs, the Mode 2 Type 2 cable you're going to need for those occasions when you need to plug into a conventional socket costs extra. Inside, 
The standard equipment package gives you a 5.3 inch digital cockpit display for the driver's instruments, 10 color ambient lighting, a heated stitched leatherette multifunction steering wheel, two zone climate control and an auto dimming rear view mirror incorporated into which is a 45 watt USB-C port, one of no fewer than seven dotted around the cabin. Plus there's a wireless charging mat. The front seats are heated and between them lies a so-called buzz box, a removable center console with useful storage compartments. Media stuff is taken care of by Volkswagen's Discover Pro 10-inch touchscreen infotainment system, covering EV functions, navigation, voice activation, a nine-speaker DAB audio system and wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Another clever standard integrated feature is Car2X, a system which communicates wirelessly with other Car2X enabled vehicles using Wi-Fi technology so as to share information and brief your ID Buzz's electronic systems automatically on traffic updates. So for instance, if you're stuck in a traffic jam, the system will know before you do when the end of the jam is coming up and will get the adaptive cruise control ready to resume cruising speeds. And Car2X incorporates a hazard warning system that advises you of impending roadworks, accidents and emergency vehicles. It can even detect when other cars with the system are performing panic braking in front of you and in such an emergency will turn on your own brake lights even before you've reacted to help avoid you being rear-ended. Plus, of course, there's an app. There's always an app, isn't there? This one's called the WeConnect Plus app. And as usual with an EV, it's of the sort that can preheat or pre-cool the car and set charging times. Plus, the app also helps you find and use over 150,000 public charge points and works with a single charging card you can use right across Europe which includes access to Ionity's high-speed charging stations along major highways. Also included are online traffic information services and using the app, you can do things like remotely lock or unlock the car, flash its lights to help you find it in a car park, browse your ID Buzz's service history and check whether the charging cable is connected. If it is, you can start or stop charging sessions from your sofa. To get going with all this, you simply download the free application, set up a user account, add your Volkswagen, and then activate a We Connect Start contract, at which point the functions become available for three years. So, enough with the standard across the range equipment package. What differentiates the two main spec options, life and style, from each other? Well, from the outside, the life version lacks this plusher model center light bar, runs on smaller 19 inch Tilburg alloy wheels, and uses conventional LED headlamps. Inside with life spec, you have to be content with Sonom cloth upholstery and a rather dour black trimmed center fascia panel. As you'd hope for the substantial price premium, this style trim level gives you quite a lot more. Starting with 20 inch solder by color alloys, we've actually got the optional 21 inch Bromberg rims here. Plus the style version also gives you illuminated door handle releases and Volkswagen's IQ light matrix tech for the automatic headlights, which get dynamic range control and the tail lamps, which feature dynamic turn signals. Front occupants gain a lovely light wood, silver birch, center fascia trim panel, and armrests on both sides of the seats. Those seats come only in the single rather drab Sonom finish we mentioned earlier with life trim, but with this style spec, you get smarter Maiwo upholstery that can be had in rather brighter shades, green, orange, even yellow or if you're a little less extrovert, this test car's X-Blue. Either way, the Maiwo upholstery comes with part cloth and part stitched vegan leather. Style spec also gives you stainless steel pedals with humorous play and pause symbols and electric white trimming for the steering wheel, dashboard and central controls. The ambient lighting system is boosted from 10 colors to 30. And you get a package of practical touches too. A powered tailgate with easy open and easy close functionality 
which activates to reveal a huge multi-flex board suspended floor, which brings the base of the cargo area to the level of the rear seats when they're folded. Under the multi-flex board, two canvas storage boxes are provided, one for the charging leads and one for this style model's included cargo net. On to options. Well, a few essentials first. You're obviously going to need that additional Mode 2 Type 2 charging cable we mentioned earlier. And with base life trim, we'd strongly suggest the open and close package basic, which gives you a powered tailgate to help with this heavy rear hatch. With both trim levels, we'd ideally want the open and close package plus, which gives you power sliding side doors as well. You can improve the cabin media provision with the Infotainment Package Plus option that's been fitted here, which gives you a larger 12-inch Ready to Discover Max centre screen with streaming and internet features. And your dealer will also want you to consider one of the extra cost seat upgrade packages. The comfort seat package, which includes powered front seats or the styling seat package, appropriately plush up the upholstery obviously to a greater extent with life spec, which with the comfort package gains back some of the items lost to style spec. Both these packages can be ordered with extra cost suede-like micro fleece art velour upholstery. As for practical extras, well, with base life spec, you'll probably want to add the multi-flex cargo area load board with its luggage net. Here, we've added a retractable, electrically releasing tow bar as well. We'd also want to consider adding the 230 volt socket, which can be fitted beneath the front passenger seat and which can power electrical appliances from the vehicle's 12 volt battery. Unlike vehicles with internal combustion engines, the 230 volt connection in this EV can also be used with the motor turned off. Probably more important than any of this, though, for most likely ID buzz folk, will be to get the exterior colour right. You'll have to pay extra for it, even for the only solid shade, candy white. Otherwise, you select in three ways, from five different full metallic colours, a single pearl effect deep black finish, or more likely, from one of the retro style two-tone paint packages. There are four, this one being candy white mixed with lower starlight blue. As a finishing touch, Life Spec customers have the option of a different Venlo 19 inch wheel design, while Style Spec folk, unconcerned by the effect on driving range, can add the larger 21 inch Bromberg rims we have fitted here. Let's finish, as we always do, with a look at safety. Now, you'd expect some sort of forward collision warning autonomous braking system on a car of this kind these days, and Volkswagen's is, indeed, called Front Assist. And as usual with these sorts of setups, it scans the road ahead as you drive. If a potential collision hazard is detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or aren't able to, the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting collision. As with other ID models, this setup's city emergency braking system's been enhanced with what Volkswagen calls extended and proactive pedestrian protection, which is more specifically able to identify people or cyclists who might be about to inadvertently step into your path. Every ID Buzz also gets a lane assist lane keeping system that warns you when you stray out of your lane and applies gentle steering assistance to ease you back into it. In addition, there's a driver alert feature which monitors your reactions for drowsiness and will, if necessary, prompt you to stop for a restorative coffee. And you get swerve support to help with high speed avoidance maneuvers, plus a speed limiter, radar sensor control distance warning that stops you from getting too close to the vehicle in front and an oncoming vehicle braking when turning feature that stops you from turning into a junction into the path of another car. Plus, there's dynamic road sign display, which pictures speed signs as you pass and displays them on the dash. All of this is in addition to all the more usual features that come fitted on every Volkswagen family model, which have together helped to justify this car's five-star Euro NCAP safety test showing. 
There are twin front, side and curtain airbags, though disappointingly you don't also get an extra one to protect the driver's knees. You do, though, get a clever centre airbag, a feature first introduced with the ID3. In the event of a side impact or rollover, this airbag can prevent the driver and front passenger from colliding with each other. There are, of course, ISOFIX child seat fastenings on the outer parts of the second row rear bench, though you can't have one on the front passenger seat. It's also worth mentioning that one of the features of the We Connect Plus app we mentioned earlier is an emergency call or e-call SOS system that in the event of an accident when the airbags are triggered will automatically alert the rescue services with your exact GPS location. Other conventional safety features include the normal ESC stability control and ASR traction control systems, plus an ABS braking system further assisted by CBC or cornering brake control through the bends, plus an HBA or hydraulic braking assistant which helps reduce stopping time when you really slam on all the anchors in an emergency, plus all ID buzzes get a hill hold function to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, along with tyre pressure monitoring. If you want more, then just under £1,500 extra gets you the optional Assistance Package Plus, the main feature within which is a piece of technology that Volkswagen's particularly proud of, Travel Assist. This is a camera and radar sensor controlled assistance system that will autonomously accelerate, brake and steer your ID buzz while maintaining a safe distance from vehicles up ahead. This extra cost package also includes a side assist blind spot monitor to stop you from dangerously pulling out in front of other vehicles and emergency assist, a setup which can take over driving duties completely should you become incapacitated, steering the car to the side of the road and bringing it to a safe and gradual stop. The Assistance Package Plus further includes help for slotting this big Volkswagen into tight spaces, an area view, 360 degree surround view parking camera and a really clever Park Assist Plus system that can memorise the last 50 metres you've covered at low speed, including any changes of direction, automatically allowing the car at a push of a button to retrace its steps in confined spaces, steering, accelerating and braking itself. It's all very clever. We gave you the driving range figure for this rear-driven 204 PS model in our driving section, up to 258 miles from its 77 kilowatt hour battery. Bear in mind that this applies to the entry-level Life variant, which runs on 19-inch wheels. The plusher style version we have here, with its larger 20-inch rims, the one that you're more likely to want, manages fractionally less, 255 miles. You'll need to work hard to make the most of that range though. The 2.93 miles per kilowatt hour energy consumption figure quoted by Volkswagen for both versions of this model turned out to be more like 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour in reality throughout our test. That gives a range of more like 185 miles from a charge, a drop that we didn't find as dramatic in other ID models we've tried. At least it gives a sense of how boxy the ID buzz really is. You can monitor energy consumption via a data section of the vehicle part of the dashboard's centre screen. This shows miles per kilowatt hour consumption data in three ways. Since start, long term and since charge. To assist buzz drivers, there's an eco driving mode along with selectable eco settings in the drive ACC and air conditioning parts of the drive setting individual menu. With the drive system in eco, throttle response is lessened and the drain is trimmed down from systems like the climate control. To boost mileages, you'll also need to make maximum use of the B transmission selector setting, which supposedly can recuperate up to 100 kilowatts of harvested energy. Hopefully it does, because unlike in rivals, no other brake energy regeneration driving tools are provided. 
You might want some segment EV range perspective on some of the rivals an ID Buzz customer might be considering. You'll certainly feel very smug if you've chosen this VW over the Stellantis Group MPV design, variously badged as either a Peugeot e Traveller, a Citroen e Space Tourer, or a Vauxhall Vivaro Life Electric, because there you're looking at only 148 miles of range. But you do get three seating rows and a much lower price, starting from under £40,000. It's more likely, though, that a fashion oriented Buzz customer would be looking at less practical alternatives than that. Possibly the slightly smaller Mercedes EQB, which manages the same kind of range as this Volkswagen. The EQB is rated at 253 miles. But the EV mid to large size crossovers you could choose for much the same money as Volkswagen's asking here do significantly better. 281 miles for a base 95 kilowatt hour Audi Q8 e-tron and 283 miles for a Genesis GV70 electrified. That Genesis, by the way, is the only model in this group offering the properly futuristic 800 volt electrical architecture system you'd think this advanced looking ID model would have, but doesn't. This means the Buzz can't charge at the super fast rates possible from the new generation of ultra rapid public DC chargers springing up around Europe just at present. But its older tech 400 volt system is capable of charging at up to 170 kilowatts DC on rapid public stations, the highest rate in the ID range. The ID4 and ID5 can only charge at up to 135 kilowatts. And it's much better than the feeble 100 kilowatt maximum charging speed of those Stellantis Group MPVs we just mentioned. Anyway, a 175 kilowatt charging speed means you'll be able to top up your buzz from five to 80% in half an hour, adding a theoretical 190 miles of range in that time. Plugged into an 11 kilowatt AC wall box at home or in public, a full charge will take seven and a half hours, though most homes will have a 7.4 kilowatt unit, which will take more than 10 hours. At the time of this test in spring 2023, out and about using a public rapid DC charger, you'd be looking at around 35 pounds for a 10 to 80% charge. Battery replenishment with this VW at home would cost around £27 for a full charge on a 35 pence per kilowatt hour tariff. As usual with an EV, charging times can be set to maximise off-peak charging where possible. You can do that using the provided WeConnect app or via the charging section of the centre screen. That charging segment also shows your driving range and charge percentage. Plus, there's a battery care mode, which won't let you charge the battery to 100% to preserve its life. And there's a section where you can save favoured charge point destinations. Servicing schedules reflect how little there is to change on an electric car compared to a petrol or diesel model. The whole ID range has a two year or unlimited mileage service schedule for a basic inspection. And the warranty is the standard three year package offered across the Volkswagen range. Though because this is classified as a Volkswagen commercial vehicle, the top mileage limit is 100,000 miles rather than the usual car limit of 60,000 miles. As with most EVs, there's a separate warranty for the battery, which lasts for eight years or 100,000 miles. Insurance is Group 31E for base life spec or 33E for this plusher style version. Given the long waiting lists for this car from new, expect exceptionally high residual values to be the norm. You'll already know that electric car drivers benefit from the lowest tax rates around. Based on the very theoretical idea of EVs being zero emissions vehicles, they're not, of course, when you factor in the environmental cost of generating the electricity this car runs on, its actual well-to-wheel CO2 figure is 35.2 grams per kilometre. But anyway, the politicians count it as zero, which is why VED, or car tax, is set at zero pounds for electric cars, and company car drivers can save thousands each year with low benefiting kind rates of just 2%. 
both those things though, along with exemption from the London congestion charge, last only until 2025. Still, for the time being, that low benefiting kind rate is a big incentive. At the time of our test in spring 2023, this would leave a 40% taxpayer driving this ID buzz paying £456 a year. The same driver in a Volkswagen multivan e-hybrid PHEV would pay more than £2,300 in comparison. Makes you think, doesn't it? So, was it worth the wait? Fashionista families will think so because there's really nothing else quite like an ID buzz. Overnight, it's made the idea of an MPV potentially fashionable again, just like its Type 2 predecessor did half a century ago. Unfortunately, it's not affordable to ordinary folk in the way that model was. But the children of the hippies who rumbled about in the Type 2 back in the 60s may not mind that. And trendy businesses wanting to make a green-minded statement will flock to the cargo version. In reality, of course, the Buzz shares virtually nothing but a few styling cues with the design that inspired it. Here, in reality, is an ID4 hatch with an area body and an MEB platform stretched as far as it can go. Not far enough, inevitably, perhaps, to make it as practical for families as a Volkswagen Transporter shuttle or even a multivan. But those aren't electric vehicles, and those large EV people carriers that are, from Peugeot, Citroën, Vauxhall and Mercedes, have abandoned style in favour of outright practicality. Which is why potential buzz customers are far more likely to be considering a comparably priced mid-sized EV crossover. And this Volkswagen easily trumps one of those when it comes to cabin space. There are, of course, a few issues. This is one of those EVs that struggles to get anywhere near to its published driving range figure. And you'll have to pay an awful lot if you want the three seating rows you'd expect from an MPV of this size. And as on other EV Volkswagens, the fiddly dashboard sliders and touch-sensitive buttons continue to frustrate. There are plenty of pluses, though, including impressive ride and handling for a vehicle of this size and a real feeling of quality. And in summary, well, for years, sales have fallen away from MPVs and SUV numbers have rocketed. This is the first car in a long time that will point some customers in the opposite direction. It has enough substance to back up its style and further additions on their way to expand the offering. It's pricey, but that will put few off who would otherwise have been in the market for a premium SUV. And you never know, this Volkswagen might give them quite the buzz.